Hey guys, welcome to another Double Tap on YouTube. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Sean Priest. Hello. Hello, Johnny Breeze. How are you? I'm breezy, thank you, Stephen Scott. How are you? <laughs> Have you got your kilt on? I, I always. I am Scottish. It's the deal. I did have porridge this morning, so that was me kind of halfway to being a true Scotsman. Well done. We'll uh, just leave the rest. Uh, listen, uh, I call you Johnny Breeze, by the way, in case people wonder why I call you that, because that's what GPT, every time I put the show through uh, it, the whisper transcription model, it always comes back with your name as being Johnny Breeze or yeah. Sean Priest. And it well, all spells Sean wrong. I've got to say, yeah, everyone does. I'm forever spelling both names uh, every time, Sean and Priest. But uh, I prefer Johnny Breeze. I've got to say, AI is always correct. I'm changing my name. There you go. So, Mr. Breeze, thank you for being with us. Uh, We're also joined by uh, someone who always manages to get the name right. Michael Babcock is back with us. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So we're talking today about uh, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. Uh, normally the domain of the geeks, because, you know, this is all about the latest software coming out. But this year, of course, the focus, we hope, is going to be on AI and what is coming out across iOS and macOS, potentially, maybe even the watch. There's so much to talk about. So uh, ahead of it, I don't normally do this, guys, if I'm honest. You know, I I don't like to jump into the rumour mill too much, but Mm. I believe on YouTube it gets clicks. So let's just do it. Um, (laughs) So uh, let's talk about what we think is coming out or what we hope to be coming out. Of course, we've had lots of rumours about AI. That is going to be the big conversation. The question to you, Michael, is do you think Apple are going to go as far as we've seen from other companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, of course, OpenAI uh, at, the, at the forefront of all of this. But do you think Apple is going to get there on its own this year or via partnership? I think they're, I hope that they're going to get there by partnership and on their own, which I, I know is kind of evading the question. But my, my <laughs> hope with this WWDC is that for once in a long time, we're actually going to get blown away with, whoa, you can do that? That's pretty exciting. I'm excited for iOS. Because I feel like we haven't had that excitement in several years. At least I haven't. No, I agree. I, I, do you remember when Siri was released and in the actual uh-huh. announcement, we had a blind person sending a message using Siri for the first well, time? Yeah, and it, right, was, yeah. it was so exciting. I agree with you. And do we really, is everything focused on AI for this WWDC? I kind of yes. think it is. And I don't think that's a bad thing. One, talking about the rumor mill, Stephen, is that over the last few days, I've seen them almost trying to walk the expectations back a little bit about how, you know, maybe it's not going to be quite as groundbreaking. All the work is going to be done behind the scenes. You know, it's just going to be subtle use of AI. They're calling it grey matter. You know, you're going to see uh, it used behind the scenes when it comes to emails and messages and the way Siri works, but not so much up front in your face, which is what I want. I -hmm. want ChatGPT for Omni on my iPhone. Simple as that. I don't care how they do it. I want that. I am so sick of getting false responses from Lady S. It is just, it doesn't work. Simple Sorry, as that. Just, just to, to explain, you can actually do that already, Sean. I mean, you know, it's, it's called the Chat GPT app. It'll give you all that functionality. Yeah, yeah, you, you want got open up the app. No, no, no. I no. want it built in. I want it yes. there, ready to go anytime. I can simply shout at my pocket to do whatever, get this answer, <laughs> send this email, and it does it. I want it built in and have system control. So Demasi and I were talking about how it would be nice if Siri could actually be your assistant. So uh, (laughs) there a couple of years ago, they announced a feature where when you're messaging someone, you can be reminded of that, uh, of something that you wanted to talk to that person about. Well, that's great. Have you ever used it? I haven't because I've never gotten it to work reliably. Mm. Um, And the other thing is, is if, so for example, if I call Stephen, it might tell me, Michael, remember, you you want to talk to Stephen about this. Or uh, when we get done, what do you and Stephen talk about? I'm not sure if I'm ready to let Apple, although Apple would be the company I'd prefer to do it than Google, to say, hey, you and Stephen talked about this. Don't forget, you got to follow up with each other in the next couple of weeks because uh, that that's a little creepy, but I could see that being where AI gets eventually. Well, I mean, look, we, we can talk about Microsoft's recall feature, which is kind of that, um, I guess, to some degree, although that's more about usage of the computer over time. Uh, but then you see something like Limitless, which I've been playing around with, and that's exactly what that does. You know, it is always listening, essentially, when you activate it, to, you know, it, the microphone it will listen to you. It will uh, then be able to actually live summarize. That's kind of 
mad when you think about it. It's live yeah. summarizing as you go to say, you know, interesting bullet point here, interesting thought here. You know, and I've got to say, for someone like me, and <laughs> dare I say it for Sean, <laughs> yes. this could be the best thing in the world because, and Michael, for you and I as yep. well, we I'm have conversations nodding. all the time. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, I, at my times we have conversations and I say, we must do this, we must do that. What a great idea. And then we all come off the call and forget what we we're talking about. This is where the technology <laughs> could really benefit. And that's what that grey matter is, I think. Mm -hmm. The question, I mean, so are we getting the impression that out of the rumours and what we want, it's going to be a little bit more subtle than perhaps what we've seen through OpenAI with GPT-40, computer vision, all of that. I think so. Um, hopefully we'll be able to actually see this because the other thing that I'm reading in some of the rumors is all these great features coming in 2025, which does not surprise me because Apple is mm -hmm. known for saying, this is coming, this is coming, and then you don't get it until March of the following year. Um, and, and as long as our AI tools actually do their job and work better than what our current iteration of quote unquote assistance is doing, then I'll be happy. And even if that means that it's not as shiny and, and, and exciting, it's subtle and in the background. It's funny though, because what mainstream seems or deems as in the background could be a massive deal for us, right? If, if the AI is built in into iOS 18's core, I mean, it could be a case of, hey, be my AI. It's just in iPhone now. You know, you, you don't need the app itself. Yeah. Um, as in the uh, capabilities we saw with the vision aspect of 4 Omni from ChatGPT. You know, when it comes to door detection in magnification, now we've got real-time video description as we walk. Um, if AI is in the core of a system then it, it does start to get exciting. Even right, if so that's that is, what you're looking forward to. You, or that's what you're looking for. You're looking for it to be yes. built into those. And I, yeah. I guess that makes sense because you, you're of kind of... Of course it does. How dare you? <laughs> but it does, right? Because then you've got it in there. Uh, you don't have to therefore go off to another app. You can rely on Apple. And it's interesting because you touched on something there, Michael, which I think a lot of people are going to touch on in the next couple of weeks, and that is privacy. Apple are known for privacy. This is where I think that they can get something right. But the question I have is, you, you mentioned at the top about, you know, it's going to be a combination of both, potentially. It's going to be, you know, on device. That's where the privacy part will come in. But then you're going to have that opening up to, and there's rumours about, you know, an agreement with OpenAI. If that happens, how does Apple square the circle with privacy when it comes to OpenAI? So I'm sure Apple have their way to do it, but there's a feature. I think it's available in more than just the U.S. and Canada called uh, Private Relay, which allows you to browse the web using something similar to a VPN, but to where the web, uh, to where your ISP can't see how the content or where you're going, um, and it's separated into two different uh, encrypted tunnels, for say, uh, to, before it gets to your device. So none of the information can associate with they say can associate with you um and and bart bouchotts does a great job at explaining it better if you uh, go to allison's podfeet website and search for it you'll be able to find uh, how this this technology works i think apple's going to be able to do a way of anonymizing information that has to get sent out to the web and because apple knows who sent that information they can bring that anonymous response back to you and it not be associated with you i guess the other thing is in I'm guilty of this too. I've been saying, let's improve Siri. Let's let's improve the way that Siri and, and Spotlight works on the iPhone. What if all Apple does is like, you know what? Uh, now the end user can just pick their smart assistant that they associate with the home button or the lock button. Uh, I don't know if Apple would do that because going back to the privacy, but that could be a way to give a lot of AI too. That's not going to happen. No. I, I don't see that. I, 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 that does not resonate with <laughs> Apple at all. That's something Google would do. I would totally see Google doing that well, they with have Android already, and, and they have, yeah. 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 So you know, I, I totally see that, but I would not see that on Apple, which is a bit of a negative as well. What about the Mac, though, Michael? Because uh, you have rather irritatingly uh, disappeared <laughs> uh, from my uh, help contacts list uh, when it comes to my <laughs> my, my Mac breaking down on me. Uh, you've switched to Windows, so you know. Obviously, I guess you'll be interested in what comes out from from Mac, but uh, it, it, will it be enough? Do you think there'd be anything in there that would pull you back? Voiceover improvements, but I feel like we say that every single year. Um, every year. Mm -hmm. Voiceover improvements, but maybe AI is what voiceover uses to to improve it. Like, 
uh, as Sean was talking about, an underlying improvement to the experience of the operating system giving uh, AI, you know, root level, for say, being able to access some of that low level items. If that's the case, can that bring improvement to voiceover and the experience that you're having with it? Uh, hey, why are you acting this way? I need you to read these characters when I arrow over them, for example, and just being able to send that as a message to voiceover would be kind of cool. Uh, also, there's some redesign uh, coming to the Mac, apparently, and uh, especially to the settings. So I'd be interested if, you know, are they going to make that easier to navigate while using oh, VoiceOver? Yeah. Because I mean, that's that a lot of up. interacting, stop interacting VOJs, window spots, who knows what you're doing, VOI to try I to find something. I think the kids something. call it a hot mess, I think <laughs> is the, the right phrase for that. And that's exactly what it is at the moment. Uh, I, and, you know, it's interesting, there's talk of even changing the settings in the code control center on uh, iOS coming up as well. So lots lots of interesting stuff on, on that front. AI does seem to be the theme, though. And there's one device which I think might be the way that Apple brings AI in or maybe more uh, more quickly, uh, and that is through the watch. And there's been a, a little bit of conversation on this. I don't think enough conversation about the impact that it would have having that smart assistant, that capable smart assistant on the watch, because that would bring it immediately to a wearable. We're not waiting for Apple to then come up with, I mean, there's all kinds of ideas of, you know, magnetizing the the watch and having it worn like the human AI pin, that kind of thing. That's That, to me, is it's not going to happen. If you're wearing it on your wrist, it's already there. You've already probably got it. If you've bought the Apple Watch, you've got it. You, you've got the smart assistant capability right there. Which version, which edition it'll be available on, who knows? But, you know, the fact is that the watch is very capable and it could be, the way to get a wearable AI smart assistant to people fairly quickly. That would be kind of cool. Like that, the the Siri yeah. on the watch is a mess right now uh, as well. It, it it works and it is fairly reliable. When I lift my wrist and start talking towards my wrist, it thinks I'm talking to it. Uh, so I mean that that is kind of bonus. Aw- uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's, it would, that's our benchmark to Siri now. It knows when I'm talking to it. It knows when that's I'm talking can, to it. That's yep. all I can wish for. Yep, yep. Uh, but there are some some gotchas with Siri, like when you tell it to send a message, it, it doesn't reliably, at least for me, read me the message that it's sending, and that can turn, in, turn into some interesting conversations. So, yep. you know, if they can improve the AI, the underlying AI, going back to that improvement to the underlying AI, that could be a good experience on the watch. Yeah, it's a really good point. I didn't even think about the watch, but you're absolutely right. I mean, it doesn't even really matter how powerful it is. If it can, um, you know, send the request off to the phone, uh, if the AI has been done on device or through, you know, sent off to whoever, chat GPT-4, the point is that it's a, a very good wearable, AI accessible wearable. You're absolutely right. I'm trying to think of the possibilities you could use that for other than just asking questions, you know. Um, who starred in what film and what year was this song released, which is what I usually ask. But um, that's a very good point. The Apple Watch would be great with AI. Could that be what Humane wanted there? No, not Humane. Uh, the other one, the the cheaper Rabbit? one. Yeah, want, wanted their thing to be where if you told the watch, book me an Uber tomorrow at this time, then the watch could go back and possibly do that from your phone because of the underlying AI technology to be able to manipulate those apps. It feels like this year we're either going to be completely blown away or it's going to be a meh event. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any middle ground. I don't think it's going to be no. like, a, oh, that's actually okay. That I could see some value there. I think it's going to be, is that it? Or wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think- it, it kind of has to be that wow moment for Apple, doesn't it? I mean, they're falling hmm. way behind. And I know there's a lot of fanboys out there who want to, and I, you know, I'm a fanboy. I admit that. But I'm not enough of a fanboy not to turn around and say, ha, they're falling behind. Come on. You are. Siri is terrible as an assistant on its own. So it has to improve, even just that. And let's be honest about it. We're not talking here about a little bit of tweaking in the background. No one's in the back of Siri with a screwdriver. This is being <laughs> ripped out by the guts 
and it is being chucked to that robot that disassembles iPhones and told, deal with it. And <laughs> Slightly violent, Stephen, but yes, then, okay, well, I get yeah. it. Carry on. I like to give you visual imagery, uh, particularly violent Why? imagery, I think, works well. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that basically Siri is being squashed, and it's going to be in that machine that the iPad Pro ad uh, was uh, canned for. <laughs> and <laughs> Siri's amongst it. And then we will see a brand new... Uh, version, I think. I mean, they have kind of said that. You know, it's not it's not uh, tinkering around the engine. It's a complete replacement. That's got to happen. Do you think Siri becomes something else? Oh, <laughs> Siri, Siri Plus at uh, twenty two ninety nine a month, possibly. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking maybe they're going to call it Scarlet instead of Siri. <laughs> yes. maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe they will. Maybe they'll change the name. Maybe. I Just mean, call it, it Sam. Yeah. Call it after Chat GPT. Yeah, Sam. I mean, that'd be fine. Yeah, okay. Scarlet. Scarlet's a good name. Yeah, I think she I, might have something to say about that. Maybe, it maybe like just it. a little. <laughs> do, do you think? Do you think that that voice did actually sound like Scarlett Johansson? I have no clue, honestly. I've never paid that much attention to her voice. I just think it sounded like a great, a great assistant voice. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think? I, I see. I thought it was really annoying. I thought all that sort of laughing voice and ah, just yeah. tell me the information. Shut up. That's yeah, people, it, people complain about that with you, Sean Pace. So <laughs> oh, yeah, that's you true. can criticize. You've got yeah. a point. See, when, when you got two similar things working together. Uh, but <laughs> but there is people saying that some of that laughter and that giggly bubbliness is because it needs time to actually go out and do the research. And so it's being more talkative ah. so we can get the information and then come back and give you that information. It's like when people go, eh, it's just yep. like a filler. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And okay. some of the filler words GPT can come up with. I'm like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't think of that, actually. That's a really, that's the, that's the technological equivalent of, um, um. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I've I got to say, though, you say it's either got to be a wow moment at the actual event or it's just going to be a meh. Um, I don't know. There is the other one. There's a few events where I thought, oh, well, that wasn't very exciting. And it's not until a few days later you, you read up more detail of what a, a mm. feature can do or the feature they didn't even talk about. And you think, wow, why didn't they mention that? So yeah. I think there could be more. It could be slightly underwhelming. I don't know how they want to project this AI, if they want to project it like they're trying to catch up with everyone else or they just want to downplay it. And um, just sort of show the power of it later on, releasing it in bits and showing what it can do. I'm not entirely sure which way they're going to do it. Some of the tech journalists as well are a little bit upset. There'll be no new hardware released at WWDC. Oh, uh, that's not a huge surprise, is it? I mean, they, they very no. rarely come up with new hardware. Wasn't, wasn't it the air power mat that was shown off at a WWDC? <laughs> and then uh, it never st appeared. Still haven't got it. So, yeah, yeah they never release hardware at WWDC. Um, but, you know, that... <laughs> You know, I don't see that really being a thing unless, and this is the only thing, unless they feel, and of course, we're not at the stage where it will be released. I mean, it's important to say that iOS, you know, macOS, they will all come out later in the year. So it'll be September roughly by the time, in available public beta, of course, but, you know, you, your mileage may vary on that one. And we don't always recommend that to us blind folks to jump onto something like that, especially the early days. Um, but, you know, let's say you wait to September when it comes out. At that point, there'll likely be new hardware. So that's when we'll see new Macs and all the rest. And I wonder if, um, I, I, I kind of wondered about the decision Apple made to bring out the M4 processor on the iPad. Does that give us a clue to anything, do you think? On the yeah. iPad Pro, I should say. Does that give us a clue as to where they might be going? Because they could have just opted for the M3 processor and it would have been more than capable of doing yeah. what it wanted to do. Why the M4? Why was the rush to move up a gear on that? Because if you want to do some of the cool things we're going to show you at WWDC, expect that you're going to need to upgrade all your stuff. Mm, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Really although, right? again, although, again, the rumors are that, you know, if you've got an M1 MacBook, if you've got, you know, a, a, yeah. a 15 Pro iPhone, you'll be able to do all this stuff. So it's not like it's not going to be capable on, on older Well, tech. I mean, I, I that kind one feature. I was going to say the same mm. thing as, Light you up. know, <laughs> well, I mean, Apple's not afraid to say, hey, you want AI? Sorry, M4 only. Yep. Uh, even though iPhone it's like, Pro. hang on, I've just bought the M1, I've bought the M2, the M3, whatever it may be. Apple's one of those companies that will say, yep, that's the way it is. You only get so this Apple CD Watch drive feature on again. your Ultra. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. 
Whoa. I mean, Apple Apple are pretty uh, pretty good at that. I, I say good in the good, sense of ruthless. That, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. Exactly what I meant by good. Um, <laughs> But they are. They are ruthless that way. They will happily come along and just say, right, okay, from this moment on, this is the case. I, I do think there'll be capabilities, but I then wonder if perhaps it might be, and this is a question, there's been rumour about it, there being some kind of City Plus that you would have to pay for to get additional functionality. I guess it all depends on what that functionality is. I mean, look, we know, for example, you can pay extra right now for the, what is it? It's called the Premier One or whatever they yep. call it. The Apple Premier Apple One. One. Yep. Apple Premier One. They and that is me that, every month. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, I saw I saw a tweet the other day from someone saying, you know, Apple takes ten ninety nine, it takes four ninety nine, <laughs> and it takes three nine ninety nine a month out of my account, and I have no reason to understand why. Apple know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> I am not going to question this because uh, people just take money out of my account. Yeah, take it on you go. But I'm paying the same. I'm paying the money for the Apple One, so I'm getting all the, you know, the, the music and the TV. Who doesn't love and Apple Arcade books. when you're blind? And, yes. An arcade I never use exactly. <laughs> So maybe that'll be part of it. Maybe it'll be part of that or some kind of increased Yeah, but what could it possibly do? What what would be extra? Mm. Because the, the, the it's got to be, as we keep saying, it's got to have root level access. <laughs> Work? <laughs> Work? Oh, yeah. If you, want the, <laughs> if you want an assistant that actually does things, you need to pay. I'm not sure what extra service they could offer that would make it worthwhile for a subscription. I, I just want the assistant to work the phone, basically. I mean, I want it to be able to work my apps and my data in the phone. So what else would it need to do for me to pay for or think it's I love that you say for. that, and I love you say that, and you mean what you say, and I know you mean what you say. Oh, here we go. You, but you know what's going to happen. You're going to see the feature, and you're going to go, I <laughs> want that. Take my <laughs> money. Yep. Yeah, but what's that feature going to be? I can't I think know. of Watch uh, they haven't told us what it is yet. They haven't told us what we need to. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you know okay. how that's how it works? <laughs> they tell us what we need, and then we just say, okay, fine, take that money. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Don't know what it's going to be. So, prediction from each of you, because we're all going to get together. We'll also be joined by Shelley Brisbane on our uh, post-match analysis episode um, of WWDC. Mm. We're going to uh, actually publish the full episode here on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it in full, uh, along with it being available as podcast and on AMI Audio as well. Uh, so uh, let's get some predictions going. Um, mine's is the watch. I think the watch is going to be the star of the show, actually, and the capability of using Siri or whatever the new updated uh, assistant will be called. That would be my prediction that the watch is going to be the focus. So that's mine. Wow. Um, uh, Sean. Michael. Ah, oh, no. Ah, you uh, lost that one. Wow. Well, okay. What could it be? It's got to be something. I want to stay away from AI. And we know also that the UI is up for a redesign, the home screen as well. Yep. So I'm going to stay away from that. So I will say, I think, I think, well, what I actually want is, you know, the dock at the bottom. This is this is so frivolous. The dock at the bottom. I want that to be able to be scrollable, so I can add more mm -hmm. things to the dock. I am. I've got everything on the first page of my phone in folders. <laughs> in folders. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's getting harder and harder. Like now, I had. A, I've got a folder called Smart Tech, but now that's got wearables in it. Uh -huh. It's got my Home Assistant. You know, smart home stuff in it. It's getting a bit crowded. So I have more folders, more folders. I want that dock at the bottom. I think iOS 18 is going to have a dock that you can scroll through. The UI is going to be totally redesigned to that specifically is my um, suggestion, my um, okay. my prediction. All right. The dock is going okay. to be more uh, capable. Functional. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, settings is going to get a redesign, which I think we already have read that rumor. But mm. with yeah. that redesign, I'm going to go directly into accessibility because this would be a good opportunity for this. I'd like to see a way to either A, synchronize my voiceover settings through iCloud oh, uh, between yes. my phone and my computer because I feel like I found something a couple of months ago and I don't remember where that was talking about synchronizing voiceover settings with iCloud. So I, I would like to see that and or the ability to uh, either export or at least... <clears throat> at least let me reset my voiceover settings independent from the other settings on my phone. Because sometimes I fiddle around with voiceover and I just want to reset <laughs> yes. everything to default, but I don't want to reset everything to default, which is what you have to do uh, currently is reset all your settings. Those are great ideas. That um, is good. Yeah, I, I'm with you on this. I mean, it's interesting because if you go into the Mac, there is actually a setting in the under iCloud for voiceover. 
So there's some kind of synchronization going on, That's but it doesn't it seem to be useful yeah. in any way. It doesn't. It's not like you open up a new Mac and suddenly you can just create. The only way to get that is to migrate your Mac over to a new one. So you would go through the migration assistant and then you'd be able to transfer everything. So you're cloning your machine essentially in onto couple, the other. And a couple of months ago, uh, it had to have been like December, I think it was, uh, I recorded a episode showing you how to set up portable settings on uh, voiceover. And I sent yes. that to Allison Sheridan. She's like, this isn't working for me. And she was running a newer point version in uh, Mac OS than what I was running. And when I updated, I was not able to set up portable settings on voiceover. So it would be a natural progression oh. to give you that portable settings, but use iCloud to synchronize it. But you yeah. can you can export your settings, which is yes. useful. So you can export, yes. and that was something I didn't even know until you told me that yeah. you could just go into once you're in VoiceOver, you go to Edit, I think, or, or you file go up menu. to the VoiceOver menu, I think, or the file one of those. Again, this is only on the Mac, and I'd like this on, yeah. to be on the iPhone. Exactly. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because a good friend of ours who comes on the show regularly, Colin Hughes, a disability advocate in the UK. Uh, he has got a muscular dystrophy. So he doesn't have a visual impairment, but he does have issues uh, uh, using the machine with his hands. And, and, you know, he uses voice control a lot. He uses lots of different functionalities. And I saw him writing something the other day, and I thought, you know, good for you for bringing this up, because it's a good point. He says that in the settings menu under accessibility, you have all these different accessibility options, but vision, for example, is always at the top, and then other ones are follow that. He said it'd be good to be able to customize the layout mm. of that, move that up, move the ones you use to the top. I think that's a really smart move yeah. because, yes, you could argue it's easier for us who are using something like voiceover to be able to navigate. But if you're using voice control and you have to constantly scroll to get to the setting you're trying to get to, to be able to just move that to the top of a list and customize it. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> we always have this conversation, it seems, around the wish list always comes back to customization. And then all the Android people are jumping up and down saying, hello, <laughs> this is what we've had for years. Yep. And we keep trying to tell you that. And then now you're like, oh, customization, what a great idea. But actually in those areas, that could be pretty cool. The challenge, of course, as we know, is that accessibility is becoming this burgeoning thing. And it's inside an already burgeoning settings app. It is, there's a lot of settings in there. There's like, you, you think back to the very first iPhone, uh -huh. it was so basic. Uh -huh. And yeah. you know now it is full of different features. And there's a lot of crossover as well between, you know, is it under audio or is it under accessibility but audio, again, that kind of thing. This is where we go back to why AI is so important. That could answer all of those questions, right? Yeah. Simply yeah. asking AI to do whatever, it can mm. figure out which setting it is, where it is, and toggle it on or off, or do whatever you need. So we're excited. We've got Shelley Brisbane joining us as well. She'll be here with the three of us on uh, June 11th. You'll be able to watch this on YouTube and get a reaction to all of what is going on uh, at the Apple WWDC event. I really hope <laughs> it's a good event. Otherwise, it's going to be a very boring hour for you. Um, as basically, <laughs> I was just sitting around going, well, was that it? I mean, it's literally, that'll be it. And then we'll talk about something else. We'll just talk about something. We'll talk about why Michael's decided to ditch the Mac for a PC. See, you've I got think a backup that, content. There you go. Yeah, There you go. If, if Apple, if it all falls apart, if Apple comes up with a terrible event for us, then we are going to talk about Michael uh, getting a PC. Um, that is definitely good. It's going to happen either way, but it may be sooner, <laughs> depending on the event. Uh, guys, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, Michael, as always, uh, Unmute Presents is where we'll find you. Uh, Unmute.show is the yeah. website, correct? Yep. Yep. Club Unmute as well, if you want to boogie on down with the nerds, um, you can do that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you got to pay, mind you, but you got to pay at the door to get into a club. That's how it yeah, works. That's fine. We're cheaper than a club's admission. I guarantee exactly, that. Exactly, that's right. But no cheaper alcohol than a allowed. coffee. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, no, yes. no alcohol allowed around the Braille. Uh, you're starting a Braille class, aren't you? We are in July, starting a Braille class taught by Chris, and so that'll be super fun. And uh, you say no alcohol around the Braille. Oh, well, I do, because I like my Braille to be um, readable. <laughs> and I like to be able to read Just it while I'm trying to read it. Yeah, well... <laughs> You know I'm blind, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, guys, thanks show. again. We'll, we'll come back and we'll do this again next week. We'll uh, talk more about all of the uh, the wonderful stuff that's coming. Look forward to it. Michael, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, do check out uh, our website for all the very latest happenings and what's going on. We'll publish their first sometime if we get to it uh <laughs> so do check out the website double tap on here.com we will be back of course on the 11th of june here on youtube 
and on podcast as well, and on AMI Audio, and basically anywhere else you can find us uh, as we publish the entire show for the first time here on YouTube. So we'll do that so you can catch up with all of our uh, thoughts. It, 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 you know, I'd like to say it's because we're trying something new, Sean. It's mm. because basically I just can't be bothered having to go and cut it all up and try and figure it all out. Just to publish the whole thing. Yeah, Why are you doing it? I'm not doubling anyway. up the job. Yeah, it's fine. We're very lazy. Yes. <laughs> so we'll catch you uh, then. Exciting times. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye. 